Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. And I'm Carlos Sultana. And Zoyoy Kameva. Kameva! To Anderton's.co.uk, home of the fantastic guitar range PRS. PRS, yes. Now, some of you may, some of you may remember, those with uh, particularly good memories, uh, that uh, earlier this year, uh, we shot uh, some videos on a new range of uh, PRS guitars coming out of Indonesia. Indonesia. Uh, I think it's Indonesia, isn't it? Um, Home of real unicorns. <laughs> real unicorns? Yes. Really? Yes, because they found, uh, <laughs> that's true, <laughs> there was a documentary I saw on YouTube, which of course means it must be true, um, where they were looking at Indonesian islands and uh, they found what, where a they tiny... found mermaids as well? No. No, this, this is real. They found um, uh, tiny, dragons. tiny white... Um, a rhino, right? Right. That lived right. in forests, and they kind of squeak and make little cute noises, and they walk up, and they're very, they're completely tame, Are they and they walk up to you and go, "You're right." Can they you fly? Doing? No, but they have got a horn, and they're like a little white horse with a horn. So I think that might be where the so what, uh, myth what we're basically of the saying is that the myth of the uni unicorn is where somebody actually saw just a small rhino and went, "Look, it's a horse with a horn." Yeah, but if you didn't know what what. A rhino was, and you saw a little white, kind of horsey looking thing with a horn, you go, it was like a horse with a horn. And that makes perfect sense. Yeah. And there you go, Anderton's unlocking. It's, it's like the a cow, myths. though, to an extent, isn't it? It's like a horse with a horn. But it's black and white, not white. Horn. <laughs> Although some cows are white. They are, aren't they? Fair shout. The ones that do uh, white chocolate, they're white, aren't they? That's how you get white chocolate, isn't it? You just milk a white cow. Is that, I thought one of them did white and one of them did. <laughs> What are we doing? Awesome. Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> Milk, chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Milk, chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. No, what is it? White chocolate. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so this fantastic new range of guitars called SE Standard. And you may remember, because um, Rob and Rabir liked them so much that the Rabir ended up actually buying uh, yep. an SE Standard uh, and then 245. And we, we used it all over our album. Um, great value. So th this range is designed to sit underneath what you guys currently know as the SE, kind of the Korean SE range. Um, so, Carlos. Carlos Santana, you know, the... Um, I want to say the original kind of PRS endorsee. I think he kind of. Was, I think he you know, is the, the first. The guy, he was the first guy. That, the guy. The one that yeah. Paul Reed Smith, I think, hunted all around the country, all around North America, saying, "Please try my guitars. Please try my guitars." And eventually, he did, and probably said something like, "Man, these things, these are great," or something like that in his sort of Mexican <laughs> accent, uh, or whatever. <laughs> That wasn't a very good Mexican accent at all, was it? I, to be honest, I can't but, do a Mexican accent, although I have been to... Um, do it say Arriba, yeah. Arriba twice, and then everything else will flow into Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos Santana models as part of the SE standard range. There is the one that Robert is holding, which is just simply called the SE standard. Mm. Carlos Santana model, obviously. Um, and there is the one that I am holding, which is basically the same guitar, but with P90s on it, called uh, the SE special Carlos Santana. Now these are simply made basic rock funk blue soul machines. Mahogany um, bodies. It's a mahogany body. Mahogany Pretty lightweight, neck. though, isn't it? I, it's a, it's a, it's either. Oh, it's very lightweight. Yeah, I'm guessing it's a sort of. It doesn't f sort of. I don't believe it's chambered, other than the, other than the, the electronics cavity. So yes. I'm guessing it's just a. It's a particularly sort of unheavy grade of mahogany. Have you got it's, the same tailpiece? No. No. It's no, not the no, only. Mine difference. is mine is the beautiful PRS tremolo tailpiece. Tremolo. Tremolo. Um, <laughs> and mine is a sort of a compensated intonation wraparound. Um, tail piece, uh, do you know like what the official much. spec of the neck gauge is, Lee? Because I'm going to say this is kind of a, a regular from PRS. Officially, I don't know, but don't know. but with the power of the Tinterweb, I can find out for you. Fire it um, up. Um, <laughs> 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 Hello. Uh, While he's doing that, I'm just going to play you a couple of tones. Do that. Thank <laughs> you. 
just as you're getting some sick tones out of that, there's possibly a reason for that. As in, they're the same pickups on that guitar as are on the SE245. Of that, course. Uh, oh, I don't know bought. what Mr. Paul, Mr. Reed, and Mr. Smith have to say about All these three pickups. of them are geniuses. They are some of the nicest pickups we've had the privilege to hear. So, both guitars have a PRS wide, fat neck. So that means it's wide this way and it's fat this way. Well, that's interesting um, because it, didn't feel, it doesn't feel particularly fat to me. Well, I don't know. This is definitely fatter than a wide thin. Yeah, maybe I just maybe my hands grew. I think they grew. That's what it is. <laughs> you know what? It's probably all the pointy thin shred machines we were doing yesterday. Do you know what? You have a complete point there <coughs> because wide, thin, fat, skinny. It's it's completely the actual difference mm. in the necks is all millimeters. Yeah. But I think what happens is as soon as you play one for any period of time, it becomes normal, and therefore then when you go to something else, it's like ooh. Yeah. Well, you play that for a bit. Okay. Anyway, ooh, ooh, anyway ooh. whatever. So wide, fat necks, 24 and a half inch scale length. So, you know, we're talking about um, the same scale length as the uh, PRS SE245, which is a fraction shorter uh, than um, you might find on a, um, a Les Paul. Um, yes, and Paul Reed Smith describes that as giving you slightly more of a hoopy scoopy sound, which I like. And I think these must have 10 gauge strings on them because they feel there's a fair amount of tension given that it's a short scale or a shorter scale neck. Now, it says in the spec that it is specifically sourced lightweight mahogany. Okay. So, so after me sort of going, oh, it's particularly lightweight so mahogany, it's, isn't it? It's, and it's, it's specifically probably sourced. the species we call sapili. It is. Uh, oh, I see. Is it, uh, it's, um, well, more than likely. Cause... It's because they water it with diet water. Oh, That's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> calorie free, seven up. It also has got pinties in it. It's got what? Pinties. What's pinties? P90s. Oh, P90s. Yeah. These are just classed as the PRS SE P90s. Uh, they both come with deluxe wait, gig wait. bags. That camera's diedly. Well, who set that up then? Well, no, I think the batteries just run out because it's just. Well, it can't have had much the battery, battery, can it? No. I blame Rabir. I definitely hey. blame <laughs> <laughs> And then we, we turned them back on again, and I got some battery charges out of my car. Um, well, awesome. So, so now we're good. Remember, anyway, where were we? P90s, simple machines. Simple machines with a nice gig bag. Um, and to be honest with you, they basically, they feel uh, exactly the same really in terms of their sort of build quality as the SE standard range that we reviewed before, which we said was very, very good. Well, these feel identical to the SE Santanas from PRS. Uh, well, and so they should. Well, relatively. What um, colour is this then? Wood? <laughs> yes, that's wood. No, do you know what? That's chestnut. Chestnuts <laughs> roasting by the old log fire. <laughs> oh, sorry. So that's chestnut. This is probably vintage cherry. Right. And if you can see over my oh, shoulder. Yeah. Cre uh, creamy whitey is, uh, stuff. Antique white, vintage white, yeah, can't remember, but like a, like an old mellowed white. Okay. Um, there are only three colours, same three colours in both models. It's, get, it's getting hot in here. I might have to go to my t-shirt. <laughs> Uh, I'll do it for the next video. I made that for judgment continuity. call way before this video um, was going to happen because it's a Santa and it's going to get hot and spicy. So have we? We've heard some tones from this. Well, yeah, but let's hear some uh, clean let, tones. Let me just what? What? I should say at this point as well. We're using these fantabulous Archon amplifiers from PRS, which in a previous demo we just went. Do you know what? They're kind of they've got a metal vibe to them, so or like a rock metal. Well, thing, they're clearly so. not for this particular. But we've realised that actually they'll do a, a Carlos thing remarkably well as well. and it's fat and warm. Now, 
if we ganache up, what you can get with the is some of those infinite sustained sort of Santana oh, type sorry, notes. I should say that was with the tone rollback. What, on the clean channel? Yeah, because that's, kind of the, the, that's how we had it set okay. for that Santana sound. So I'll, in a minute I'll do some clean without the tone being rolled. <laughs> Thing is, I just want to shred on it because but, I'm a shredder. But don't, don't do that. But also, it's, it's really easy to play. It's Carlos, man. And it, and it does that. It just, it's got that sustaining point all over the guitar where you can kind of. You know. expecting that well and that's interesting because that's now with two different amplifiers so arc on this time and what did we use when we did the the previous probably was the jcm I'm, I'm it i'm convinced it's the pickups it, and the guitar just sings <clears throat> you know what it? if prs sell these pickups separately which they won't which they don't then then buy one of the guitars take the pickups out take the pickups mm. out and put it in well, your favorite guitar. except of course that as we all know it's the sum of all the parts is what makes the sound it is it? the sum of all the parts um, it's a well hold on let's just let's just put that tone full in and it. now take a look. Wait, why don't I tune the guitar before I do that? What a crazy idea. Of course, I'm using the only tuning pedal that works in the entire world, the TU3. Not true. So we're all tuned, Lee. Good. Let's see how it sounds with all the tone and all what, the with, tuning. With clean or with gain? No, gain first, then a bit of clean. Okay. I just say instantly, totally non Carlos Santana. Oh, I love it. I know, but to interact, just literally, it's all clearly all in oh, the yeah, tone it's control about tone and, and, and I guess the kind of licks that yeah, you yeah. play. But because, um, yeah, I mean, you. I mean, Carlos wouldn't be doing, you know. And to be honest with you, I can't imagine anybody wanting to do that would buy a Carlos Santana. No. Not because they can't but do you it, could. but just because. It's, you know, it's like, it's just the Shretana. wrong. Oh, it's great. It it's good, really, really it? nice, it yeah. It just... Who's, wait, 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 clean. Who's eagle-eyed enough out there of you to spot that actually the Carlos Santana shape is actually a, a, its own unique PRS shape? I am. You are? Yes. Uh, it kind of reminds me a little of like a, a Les Paul double cutaway. It's like an ESP sort of pot special. belly. It's like a pot belly. Does it? Yeah. Um, but yes, so uh, he, it's a, I think it's a little fatter here, a little fatter here. Uh, obviously the two cutaways and a slightly more symmetrical look than... Um, it's like an SG the, was tweaked. Yeah, but it's nice, isn't it? Very nice. It's nice. Very nice. When you see the actual proper American ones, they often have, uh, well, I say often, they may always have, I'm not sure, a really pretty sort of detailed abalone kind of inlay that runs up the middle of the bone. That's where he puts the drugs on that line. So it's, that well, it's because, yeah, yeah. I don't think he does that Allegedly. Anymore, does he? No. I think <laughs> Uh, oh, well, mine yours went, but I wondered if so mine yours went. doesn't. No, no, no. Not, not on the back one. No, I tried okay, back in front. Um, 
But it does come with a gig bag and obviously a trem system and lots of nice things like that. And it's three hundred and ninety nine pounds oh, in England. Don't know what it is. That's not a lot of imperial credits of the realm. No, nope, it's very good value. So I'm having. I've got the same basic amplifier, but in a but in a sort of a fifty watt one twelve combo rather than <coughs> head. So it'll sound a little different, but hopefully similar enough. Um, and of course, I have P nineties. So. <laughs> more now what you can hear of course is lots of hum in the background because it's single coil hum and I'm sitting right in front of the amplifier uh, I can eliminate that hum by going to the yeah. middle position so. flesh tone. Can we hear it with stone tone? You can hear stone tone. For an affordable guitar, they are good. Kick now, it up, bro. So, oh, this is where you are going to encounter a few problems with a P90 guitar. It's going to be noisy, I'm afraid, um, unless we use that middle position. And What's a good kind of noise? That's like a vintage car, you know, you want that kind of grunt. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, so. Tone all the way off, off, tone all the way off, or most of the way off, neck pick up, see if we can get a bit of that infinite sustain that Rob was getting as well, see if this guitar will do it as well. You can just about get it to feedback. I might get it if it was a bit more volume on the amplifier, but it's definitely sounding like the humbuckers want to go there. The P90s don't more quite subtle, want to go there. It's do a they? subtle kind of thing, P90s. Um, but I think it's nice for perhaps a more of a back. with you know the volume back down a bit the tone back down a bit you let, me in. let me check on tune to okay.
it sings, Very man. Nice. I lose myself sometimes in these things because it's just like when you get a tone and you get a riff going on, it's just like that's, that's when the whole thing about going, I love playing guitar because you just kind of it just. A bit of magic happens, doesn't it? A bit of magic. It's a, a bit time of magic machine. On whatever level you are. It's a time a machine. Of... It takes you back to a certain time. You've stolen that from It's a, a piece of art. <laughs> it takes you to a place in your mind that makes you feel like just, you know, going to Mexico. I love America, it. America. I love touring. it. I'm, uh, yeah, it's a great guitar. You know, I must admit, and I've got to say as well, you know, I'm not the, probably <coughs> the world's biggest Carlos Santana fan. You know, I, 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 I know of his work. And I appreciate kind of some of his tone, I think, I think is what I do think he, he gets. I, I, I remember seeing him being interviewed, actually it may have even been by Paulie Smith, but he talks about um, one of the things that resonated with me about how he approaches playing guitar is he's a, he is one of those guys that he's a real believer of it's a singing voice. It's that, you know, that it's a human singing voice. Yeah. And that's fundamentally what you're trying to, you're trying to get all those beautiful tones of an amazing singer. Um, it's cool. I, I like his taste in female guitar players too. Who does he like? Orianthe did a lot for her. Uh, yeah, she's good. I heard the other day that uh, Richie Sambora and Orianthe are an item. Well, of course they are. I didn't know that. Well, of course. Well, you, how did you know that? Well, if you, if you were hanging out with, with Richie Sambora, wouldn't you want to be? Yeah, like I someone? probably would, in yeah, fairness. Yeah, that's either. true. So there you go, Richie, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> and on that wonderful <laughs> note, I have been right. Rob Chapman. And I've been the captain. Bye. Bye.